Welcome back, everybody. We're live here at the Leah Cora Center today. On Sunday, this place is going to be rocking as an undefeated team comes into this building, and that's SMU. They're 18-0 and 8th in the country. Zach Gelb and Mike Zahn here with you. And now joining us is the head coach of those Temple Owls, and that's, of course, is Fran Dumphy. Coach, how are you? I'm great, Zach. Thank you very much. Happy to be here with you guys today. Well, thank you for coming on, and we're very appreciative that they scheduled the game at noon on Sunday when they had to reschedule it because of the snow because then we get to come here, watch a great Temple basketball game, and then get on our way and watch the football. Well, I'm happy for all of those folks. We'll be preparing for a great, great basketball team to come in here. I'm hoping that we'll have a good crowd. I think we were going to have a great crowd on Saturday night. Hopefully that will uh, not – burden us with uh, uh, too many people not coming to the game on Sunday. I'm hoping that we can get a great, great crowd here that will help us uh, play this terrific team. You know the importance of what John Chaney has meant to this program, just being a guy that loves basketball and loves this university. Um, yesterday, Coach turned 84 years old. What's your relationship like with Coach Chaney? Uh, it's a very good one. I, we, he and I spoke at length on Wednesday, the day before his birthday, and uh, you know, he wished us well against LaSalle Wednesday night. He's a tremendous man. He's he's meant so much to Temple University, but meant so much to Philadelphia and really to college basketball as well. He's done an unbelievable job in representing this sport, and uh, he's meant so much to so many people and grateful to still have him in our lives. And I know that you say sometimes he comes and talks to the team and um, that Coach Chaney, you always make that joke, he still makes your schedule. Absolutely. Um, just what's the most valuable lesson when you could pick a legend's brain like that that you've learned from him over the years? Well, he just has such great wisdom and, uh, and understanding of what goes on in young people's minds. And uh, I, I think any time you get a chance to be with him and just talk the game, but really talk the game of life, uh, and just listen to some of the things that he has to say. I think he's, he's given so much to this world, and uh, I think we're all very grateful for that. And, uh, certainly for, on a personal note, he gave to me uh, 17 years of competing against him, uh, great lessons of of how to run your program. And then when I got a chance to come here, he, he said to me, it's okay if you come and take my spot, uh, which I was very, very grateful for. We're talking to the head coach of the Temple men's basketball team, and that's Fran Dumphy. And Fran, just before we get into – uh, Sunday's game now that's been rescheduled just bring me back to Wednesday that's the first double header in big five play since 2004 just walk me through all the emotions that were happening on that night well I think for a guy who grew up going to the palestra as a as a young man uh, grade school high school uh, always going to Wednesday Saturday double headers down there um, and then get a chance to play there at the palestra in, in big five basketball back when all of the teams played all of their games there and then get a chance after that to have the key to the front door of the place. Uh, it's always emotional when I go back. It just brings back a flood of memories. Uh, you know, I was, I was looking for my mom and dad uh, at the game the other night just because they used to come to all of our games, and and, uh, and they were so much a part of who I am, and uh, I was lucky enough to have my brother and two sisters there to, to watch the game. So I think any time you can get – to that place with that many memories and that many histories and traditions that are still going on there. It, it's terrific opportunity. So gr grateful that it was put together. Can it be done again next year? Uh, I don't know that. We'll see. And uh, if we could have a Palestra doubleheader every year, take a lot of, uh, of uh, communication, take a lot of sacrifice by all of the schools. But I think it's, it was a great night the other night. And I think a reason why it would take so much sacrifice is because you guys also aren't in the A-10 anymore, and, you know, it's tough. Does that have any impact on the big five games, the fact that you aren't in the A-10, and, you know, you see teams like LaSalle and, and St. Joe's in, in the A-10? Well, yeah, it, it has a little bit of an effect. But I, I think really what has happened is everybody has got, gone to their own way of doing things, you know, and I, I think that's the same reason why you probably can't get – Washington, D.C., New York, Chicago, L.A. to do what we do here in Philadelphia and have all five schools play. Just it's too much sacrifice for folks, you know. And for us, we get, if we're if we're going to play there again next year in one of these doubleheaders, we would probably have to give up a home game here at at Temple. Uh, and too many people sacrifice too much to get this building right where it is. And it's a terrific place. It's a great home court for us. It's a great a facility. Uh, it has all the amenities that people need and want. So it'd be really difficult to do. So, uh, but you never know, maybe we'll try it again. And, uh, and if it does happen, it was, it was a terrific night the other night. I think probably, uh, because so many others had, uh, so many great players had come back and donated their time back to, 
to the big five, really what it was. You know, people like Lynn Greer and Mark Macon and Aaron McKee and John Baum and, and Jay Norman, all those Temple folks that, uh, that came back to represent. It was pretty cool. We're spending a few minutes with Fran Dumphy. Temple will play SMU on Sunday at noon Eastern time, and that game will be broadcasted right here on Philadelphia's number one college radio station, WHIP. Team has won four of their last five games. What's been the biggest difference with this team from earlier into the year up until now? You know, I think just coming together, knowing everybody knowing their role. Uh, you know, obviously we've changed the lineup a little bit. Uh, in each game we've changed it uh, differently, so – uh, I think we've got pretty good depth. I think everybody just coming to understand what their role is, you know, and I just listened to Jalen Bond and Quentin DeCozzi on a TV, uh, Temple TV uh, program here. And, uh, you know, we're, we're – what we've tried to do always is to, when you give everything you have at the defensive end, give you some freedom back on the offensive end. And, and I think the guys are really – have bought into that. So that that's really where uh, I think we are. I'm hoping that we're playing our best basketball. What factored into the decision to start giving Ernest more minutes? Uh, just he's our hardest worker. You know, he, he doesn't have to think about trying to get rebounds. He's, as I said on the, the TV show, he's a very selfish guy, Ernest. When the ball's up on the rim, he thinks it's his. And I like that selfishness about Ernest. And uh, so he goes after balls. He rebounds balls outside of his neighborhood. You know, it's not like he, he goes there and, he, and he's going to get it when it's in his area. He's going to try to go and get every rebound. I think it takes some of the dirty work away from uh, Jalen Bond. I think that helps him in his overall game. Uh, so uh, that's what we're looking for every day is to be the same guy every day and to work as hard as you possibly can. And Ern doesn't have to think about working hard. He just does it. Obi's been a player that struggled as of late. Um, how would you evaluate Obi Nechionia's play so far this season? Well, he has struggled a little bit, uh, and we've taken him out of the starting lineup just because he was getting into some foul trouble early. And, and let's let him sit on the bench a little bit and watch and see what his role will be on a particular game, where he can get his shots, who, who will be guarding him, how he will be guarded, uh, see who he's going to have to guard and if he can't get uh, – do more work on the backboard. Uh, but Obe's a talented guy, and, uh, you know, he's very much a part of what it is we're going to do in the future and and uh, hopefully can work himself out of this. You've had a lot of big coaching victories in, in your time, specifically at Temple. As I was mentioning, Rick, before you walked in, beating a Bill Self coach team, beating a Kevin Ollie coach team. Does it ever click when you hear the crowd saying the I believe chant and you're shaking hands with Larry Brown? You know, we, we beat a real good team <laughs> over there. Well, we did that a couple of years ago here too, and uh, uh, so that was a great win for us. And we had we actually had uh, leads in all three games that we played SMU last year. We obviously needed one of those uh, games to win to get into the NCAA tournament. Uh, but I, I I love the I believe chant. It means a lot to uh, to what our goal was uh, as we start the game. And if we can hear those students go crazy in the in, in the student section and and give us uh, that chant. We know we've done a pretty good job, and we've beat a really good basketball team. So anytime you hear that, you, you know you've, you've had a good day. If I recall correctly, Will Cummings was absent for one of those SMU games. I, I think he was lingering an injury mm -hmm. at that point. And now replacing him at the point guard position is Josh Brown. He's a junior right now, and it appears each and every game he gets better and better. Can you just comment about Josh Brown's play as of late? Well, I, I did say how hard Earn works. I think Josh probably works uh, as hard as anybody we have overall, off season, in season, uh, watching film, getting extra shots up, studying the game plan, those kinds of things. And he has to be your eyes and ears on the court, uh, not only in not turning the ball over, which he's done a really good job of. He's more than three to one in terms of uh, assist to turnovers, and uh, two to one is what we're two or two and a half to one is what we're all preaching all the time as college basketball coaches. Uh, and he's done a really good job. And so uh, we added uh, another uh, goal for him is to really do a good job on Jordan Price the other night. Try not to give him that much of a burden out there, but he was the best matchup we thought we had against Jordan Price, and I thought he did a really good job. So he's he's been everything. And I don't think that's his natural position. I don't think Point guard is uh, J uh, Josh's natural position, but we've needed him there, and he's done a terrific job. And Jordan Price, he had the 14th most points in the nation going into that game um, at the Palestra the other night, and now you bring in uh, Nick Moore, who's the reigning um, American Athletic Conference Player of the Year. Marcus Kennedy is always a tough matchup. When you look at Moore and Kennedy's play, what stands out, and how do you try to stop them or, or contain them coming up on Sunday? 
Well, Kennedy is one of those guys that just, he's a really good basketball player. He's got a terrific IQ. He's got a really good skill level. And he's really uh, kind of feasted on playing Temple, it seems like, uh, each time we've played them. I thought last year in that game here, he was really the telling factor in the game. He just made every big play that he needed to make. He's big. He's strong. He's he's, uh, he's a load down there. He's hard, hard to guard. Uh, so... I think he's been a terrific player for them. Nick Moore is uh, arguably the player of the year last. He was uh, he was the player of the year last year. He's arguably the player of the year again this year. Uh, they're eighteen and zero. He's their leading scorer, so he, he certainly has built a, a quite a resume. He also seems like one of those guys that gives his teammates a great opportunity to to see what they can do each and every game. And if he doesn't like how it's going, he just says, well, it's my turn. I'm going to take over and make a play, make a shot, whatever it happens to be, make a steal, get in the right spot defensively. So he's been a great, great player, and I I think he deserves all the accolades he gets. And SMU's just had such a bizarre season because of the whole sanctions, and they're 18-0, but they can't play in any postseason play. You've always stressed the importance of running a clean program, and you do that. When a story like what what happened comes out at SMU, do you at all talk about that with your staff? Well, we talk about uh, the kinds of things that go on in college basketball uh, when we, when we see some, something hit the paper, let's say, and okay, what are we doing to prevent this? And you know, none of us is perfect. We, we all try to to run the best program we we can. Sometimes things happen, and uh, you just have to deal with it and roll with it. And you hope it doesn't hurt your university, your program. Most of all, the individual student athlete. Uh, you don't want to see them get hurt at all, and because uh, their there's, their window of opportunity is so short, you want them to enjoy every moment that they get in college. So they'll become. Uh, uh, men, you know, they're not that they're not men while they're here, but they're re- very responsible people as soon as they get out of college. And now they have to be the best uh, community person, the best father, the best husband they can be. And, uh, you know, it's 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 not an easy chore. You you have to work at your craft and whether it's uh, off the court, on the court. And so we want to we want to do the best we can each and every day. But again, none of us is perfect. We're all going to make a mistake here or there. And uh, Hopefully we, it doesn't hurt too many people. We always know the power Larry Brown has here in Philadelphia. He's beloved here for what he did with that Sixers team that got to the finals and lost to the Lakers. Uh, he's synonymous with Allen Iverson. Um, but just taking a look outside of the game of basketball, because I know you have so many great relationships inside the game of basketball with coaches. Out of the active coaches now in the other major sports, is there one coach that you just look at or a few coaches that you may admire a little bit more? Well, I, I admire so many guys, and you study everybody who's out there and how they run their program. I, I think uh, as an NBA coach today, you, everybody looks at Greg Popovich and the kind of program that he has had over the last 15 years. It's been a remarkable run, uh, more than 15 probably. I think they, he's been there 17 maybe. I, I'm not sure of the exact number. But, uh, you know, and that relationship that he has with a guy like Tim Duncan uh, that's been synonymous with uh, victories and championships and just solid uh, human beingship, in all honesty, and so you study that. You know, you know obviously you're, you're studying a, a Chip Kelly who came here to to Philadelphia to to coach football, and uh, you you study that. Uh, Pete McCannon at the Phillies, and uh, every 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 major sport, and all the colleges here. I think uh, I think we have great respect amongst our college basketball brethren here. You know, we, we're trying to beat each other each and every game, but. We know what we have to do in terms of getting along and, again, respecting who came before us. And you try to do that with your players, too. And when they go out and play a game, you want them to respect who came before them. It's not about you. It's about everybody else around you. And if that's a a goal of yours, to respect everybody, that's a pretty good goal. Just before we let you run, as Fran Dumphy's here with us as we're broadcasting to you live today from the Leah Chorus Center. Eagles have a new coach in Doug Peterson. You've been a guy that's been around Philadelphia for many, many years. I like to call you Mr. Big Five. Uh, what, do, what would your words of wisdom be? What would your words of advice be to Doug Peterson about hmm. succeeding here in Philadelphia? You know, I don't think I would be giving him any advice that hasn't been giving him been giving to, to him over the years. He, he's a pretty bright guy, and uh, he'll figure it out. Uh, I'm sure he'll work very, very hard to bring Philadelphia a great uh, Eagles football program, and and uh, we'll all be behind him. And uh, w- because when everybody else, when other teams are successful here in Philadelphia, it's good for Philly, and I think that's what we all wanted. It puts uh, all of us in a better light, and it certainly puts uh, most of the city in a good mood on Monday morning when the Eagles come up with a, a victory on Sunday. And 
it's fun to watch them play well. And uh, when they do, it's, it's, it's a great opportunity. Do you take advantage of that free Dunkin' Donuts coffee? Are you a big coffee guy? When the Eagles win, you get a free cup of coffee? You know, I don't take advantage of it. I, I like Dunkin' Donuts. I'm a decaf uh, cream and sugar guy just in okay. case you're buying. Tech <laughs> and, uh, but well, I, I've never drank coffee in my life. So yeah. This is natural soon energy, enough. Coach. Yeah, and soon enough you'll, you'll, get the, <laughs> you'll get into it and you'll, you'll reach that part of your age that will uh, – that will allow you to, to get a little caffeine in you. But I'm a decaf guy. Uh, but I, I enjoy it. I, but I enjoy the Eagles. I enjoy all, all of the, the Philly teams, and I want them all to be successful and, uh, and want all of Temple University to be successful as well. Well, best of luck, Coach, on Sunday. Go out there, beat SMU, and we appreciate you coming by for a few minutes today. You got it, guys. All the best. Yep, thank you so much. There's Coach Fran Dumpy. We'll take a quick break, and we'll be back right after these short messages.